floor as well. I will bring you right back to join us with that. So I want to take into, I want to take you now to Chuck Schumer, who's having a news conference. Let's listen in. What to do? We saw today. What we saw today was a microcosm of this impeachment since day one. Hallowed, frivolous, political, and we felt very strongly that we had to set a precedent that impeachment should never be used to settle policy disagreements. I felt that very strongly. This is the first impeachment I can recall. You look at history. None were done because there were policy disagreements. If we allowed that to happen, it would set a disastrous precedent for Congress, could throw our system of checks and balances into cycles of chaos. Any house time the House would want to just shut the Senate down, they could send over another impeachment resolution and could create frivolous, frivolous impeachment trial after impeachment trial. So I felt it really important. The dangerous precedent was not the one the Republicans are talking about, but the one of letting impeachment take the place of policy disagreements. Cabinet person after cabinet person could be subject to this. We cannot have that happen. And I felt that that's what the Senate had to do to keep its response, to keep, step up to its responsibilities. We're supposed to have debates on the issues, not impeachments on the issues. We are not supposed to say that when you disagree with someone on policy, then that's suddenly a high crime and misdemeanor. That would degrade government. It's clear that Republicans aren't interested in working with Democrats to fix the problems at the border. In fact, if they wanted to pass the bipartisan proposal we put together and have a debate on it about policy, fine. If Republicans, instead of spending so much time and energy on this meritless impeachment, work with Democrats on border reform, then we might have actually gotten something done. If House Republicans want to have a serious debate on border security, we welcome it. But everyone knows what's happening at the border is terrible and needs fixing. That's not a secret. The President knows it. Secretary Mayorkas knows it. Both parties in Congress know it. That's exactly why we had a bipartisan bill to fix it. Democrats worked hand in hand with Republicans for four months to draft the strongest border security bill in 30 years, a bill with dramatic updates to asylum and reformed parole, a bill that provided new tools for addressing the fentanyl crisis, a bill that provided new resources to Border Patrol agents. If our Republican colleagues would have allowed it to come to the floor here in the Senate and down the hall over in the House, I'm certain it would have passed and gone to the President's desk. But we all know what happened. Donald Trump told his Republican allies in Congress to kill this border bill before we could even debate it. The former president explicitly took credit for that bill going down. Please blame it on me, he said. His words. So let me say it just one more time. If Republicans, instead of spending so much time and energy on this meritless impeachment, worked with Democrats on border reform, we might have actually gotten something done on this very serious issue. Questions on this subject first. The implication from Senator Cornyn's parliamentary inquiry just now during the trial was that a future Republican Senate, Republican-led Senate, could use the precedent you set today to dismiss an impeachment trial against a No, the parliamentarian ruled that the precedent set was the precedent that was done here. Don't use impeachment for policy disagreements, whether it's with a president, a cabinet a secretary, or anyone else. You're not worried that Republicans will do that leadership? No, no. We have made it clear, clear, that you don't use policy disagreements for impeachment. 
and I don't care who it is, president, cabinet secretary, or anybody else. All right, so you're listening there to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer uh, speaking live to reporters yes. after, again, they have ended the efforts to uh, impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. Again, he reiterated the point you just heard there, that impeachment should never be used to settle policy disagreements. He reiterated that over and over again. Uh, he called these efforts by Republicans uh, meritless. But he also noted that the border is terrible and but needs fixing. And again, he brought it back to that bipartisan bill that was never rising. brought to the House what floor. I want to bring back in our ABC News political director, Rick Klein, here uh, again. So, all right, Rick, we've got this split screen here. We've got Chuck Schumer and Speaker Johnson here uh, essentially saying some of these talking points that we have heard over and over again for months here, uh, almost politics as usual. And they keep going back to places where they can't agree any chance we see any kind of agreement come Saturday? Uh, I, I think on the on the on the government funding issue, or sorry, the, the the foreign aid funding issue, I think there is a chance that that some of these bills pass. There's still a long road to go in the Senate. I think on on anything regarding immigration, I mean, the, the chance, as Senator Schumer said, was was there. Republican senators helped negotiate this package that had a lot of reforms and uh, a lot of additional resources, a very conservative, by all accounts, package. And Republicans then in the House decided never to take it up. And then in the Senate, they tanked it on their own. And then what, what proceeded was the impeachment inquiry, which was designed to highlight the border policies that President Biden has been pursuing. Notably, even if he had been removed from office, if the secretary had been removed from office, uh, it wouldn't be clear if you could confirm anyone else or that any of those policies would even change. And that's why you see these kind of uh, the dueling accusations of precedence, because I think there's a temptation to say, yeah, they can't agree with each other here. But it is important to note that there was a good faith effort on the part of Democrats and Republicans to try to actually work on legislation to solve the border. And it was scuttled by Republicans after former President Trump uh, said he was against that package. And Speaker Johnson, I think, was, was a major party to that. Then you fast forward to this issue around around funding. Uh, part of what the issue is that uh, the Speaker Johnson knows well, they have a very slim majority. He's had to parcel out these pieces to allow for individual votes on things like Israel and Ukraine and, uh, and Taiwan. Uh, and one consequence of that is that you can't really cut deals along the way. So Speaker Johnson at this time is in a very precarious point, as are the, this, the, the legislation around the border that's effectively dead and the, the situation around funding for, uh, for Ukraine and Israel very much in flux as, uh, as the week comes to, uh, to a close, of the, the midweek comes to a close. Right, and certainly also it remain to see, be seen how they proceed on that fifth bill here with a lot of uh, GOP wants and asks, essentially a GOP wish list there. Uh, Rick Klein, thank you so much. I want to bring in ABC News' Jay O'Brien for us, uh, who is live there on Capitol Hill. You saw Speaker Johnson speak as well. I think a lot of people right now, Jay, I know yourself included, are wondering how at jeopardy is his job at this point? And he even said that he is willing to take a personal risk here, Jay, if we move, if they can move forward with some of these spending bills. And the big question, right, is will Democrats come to his aid and save him if they get to that point? Right. And we've heard from a number of hardline Republicans who say, for some of them, this was the straw that broke the camel's back for their trust in Mike Johnson. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey are among the most vocal. And there are other hardliners who say that while they maybe don't believe that this is the time for Mike Johnson to go, some are being coy about their thoughts on that. They do completely disagree. And the word that so many use is disappointed in Johnson's actions here. So the question facing Mike Johnson is, if this does pass, this package of four foreign aid bills with Ukraine aid in it, as well as Israel aid, aid for Taiwan, and that fourth bill that's a grab bag of GOP policy priorities. If it gets over the goal line on Saturday, what does that mean for Mike Johnson? Does Marjorie Taylor Greene operationalize her motion to vacate that she's already filed against Johnson and guarantee that it gets a vote? And does she pick up support among some hardliners who, again, are disappointed is the word they often use, lacking of trust is the other word that some have used after Johnson has made this proposal. Johnson got asked, does he believe that he's risking his speakership, his job, to get this Ukraine aid over the goal line? Because it's the Ukraine aid the hardliners take issue with. He said, Kana, he's, quote, doing what he believes to be the right thing, Kana. 
And it will also be really interesting to see uh, Donald Trump's reaction to all of this as well. Uh, Jay O'Brien, our thanks to you as always there on Capitol Hill. I want to bring in our ABC News senior White House correspondent now, Selena Wang, who is live there at the White House. And so, Selena, I know we are getting some uh, response here from the White House to what just happened in terms of the stoppage of the efforts to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, but also, when Speaker Johnson spoke, uh, Selena, he again said that he believes Alejandro Mayorkas is the least effective and most dangerous cabinet secretary in the history. But he also pointed a finger directly at the president, saying that he could take executive action uh, to close down the border as well. So clearly, uh, the fighting is not over. No, it's not, Kena. And I think what we're seeing today is sort of a microcosm of the general election talking points that you're seeing from both Republicans and the Democrats. But look, the White House, they feel vindicated right now. They've been saying for months this is a baseless stunt. It was going to be dead on arrival in the Senate. They're happy that this is quickly over with. They're putting out a statement that saying once and for all, this baseless stunt is over, taking the legal argument that this was unconstitutional from the beginning, that you cannot, as you heard Chuck Schumer say there, you cannot call a policy disagreement, high crimes and misdemeanors. And Kena, I also want to point out that you heard uh, Speaker Johnson earlier there talk about just how what a mess the border is right now. But the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, says they've deported more illegal migrants than the previous administration and said they've stopped more fentanyl and arrested more drug traffickers in the last two years than the previous five years combined. And Kena, what you heard Schumer talk about there is really that key line of messaging from the president and from his campaign, which is that they were behind that bipartisan, bipartisan border security measure that had passed the Senate, that had the toughest border security reforms in decades. They are blaming House Republicans under pressure from Trump for killing that. And that is their proof that those House Republicans are not actually trying to fix the issue. Right. He pointed out that both Democrats and Republicans worked together for four months on that bipartisan bill. They didn't bring it to the House, and he considered it uh, the strongest border bill that we've really seen in years, including asylum protection, parole, uh, and resources for Border Patrol as well. So uh, we will continue to cover this. Selena J. Rick, our thanks to all of you.